But we have another type of partial fraction, which is uh, a denominator with a repeated factor. So assuming I have 5 over x plus 3 all raised to the power 4, OK? So this means that x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3, x plus 3. So you can write this as a over, you can express this as partial fraction, as a over x plus 3 plus b over x plus 3 all squared plus c over x plus 3 all cubed then plus d over x plus 3 all raised to the power 4. Okay? So the factors are repeated. So assuming I have 7x minus 1 over x plus 5 and then x minus 6 all raised to the power 2. This becomes a, this is linear, so a over x plus 5 for linear. Then this is repeated, so plus b over x minus 6, then plus c over x minus 6, all squared. Because this is a repeated factor, you repeat it again. Okay? Now, another example is if I have 4x minus 3 divided by x into x plus 1, all raised to the power 2. This is also linear, so I can write this as a over x. So I have a over x, then plus b over x plus 1, then plus c over x plus 1, all squared. Okay? So this has to do with the repeated factors. So let's solve an example. So as you know, I've been asked to express, express um, x minus 1 over x plus 2 x plus 1 all squared as partial fractions, as partial fraction, okay? So we have in our solution, we shall have x minus 1 over x plus 2, x plus 1 all squared. Now we can express this as, this is one linear, okay? So we have a over x plus 1. And then this is a repeated factor. So we shall have the first one, which is b over x plus 1. And then the last one will be plus c over x plus 1, all squared. So this is how we express this in partial fraction. Now let's solve for the values of a, b, and c. So this is x minus 1 over x plus 2, and then x plus 1, all squared. This is equivalent to, so we shall have our LCM. Normally, when we have, oh, this is x plus 2, sorry. So this is a over x plus 2, OK? Then plus b over x plus 1, and then plus c over x plus 1, all squared. So we shall have our LCM, OK? Our LCM becomes x plus 2, and then x plus 1, all squared. This is our LCM, OK? So um, x plus 2 going to x plus 2, x plus 1, all squared. We are left with a into x plus 1, all squared. Then plus, now x plus 1 going to x plus 2, x plus 1, all squared. We are left with b into x plus 1, and then x plus 2, okay? So the x plus 2, and then one of this, okay? Because x plus 1 going to this square, we are left with 1. Then plus c into this, we're going to this 2, we are left with x plus 2. Now, since the denominators are equal, we can also say the numerators are equal. So we shall have x minus 1 is equivalent to, we shall have a into, now x plus 1 all square means this is x plus 1 and then x plus 1, okay? Then plus b into, this will give us also x plus 1. This will give us x plus 1 and then x plus 2. We are going to expand them, then plus c into x plus 2. Now, let's expand. This is going to give us x minus 1. It's equivalent to, we have a out, x times x is x squared, plus x plus x, which will give us plus 2x plus 1. Okay? Then we shall have plus b into x times x is x squared, plus 2x plus x is giving us plus 3x, and then plus 2. 
And then the last one will be plus C into X plus 2. Then we go for the last expansion, multiplying them by the variables. So X minus 1 is equivalent to, we have AX squared plus 2AX plus A plus BX squared plus 3BX plus 2B plus CX plus 2C. So we group like terms. Grouping like terms, we shall have X minus 1 equivalent to, we shall have um, AX squared plus BX squared. Is there any CX squared? No. Let's go for the coefficient of X. So plus 2AX plus 3BX plus CX. Then the constant, we shall have A plus 2B plus 2C. So X minus 1 will be equivalent to, we shall have A plus B coefficient of X squared plus 2A plus 3B plus C, coefficient of X, and then plus A plus 2B. So from here, we shall have A plus B grouping like terms X squared plus 2A plus 3B plus C, coefficient of X, then A plus 2B plus 2C, which will be the constant. This is comparing coefficients. Comparing coefficients. So comparing coefficients, we realize that the coefficient of x squared is 0. So a plus b is equal to 0. Equation 1. Then we have the coefficient of x, which is 2a plus 3b plus c is equal to the coefficient of x is what? Positive 1. So positive 1 equation 2. And then a the constant term, a plus 2b plus 2c is equal to, the constant is equal to what? Negative 1. We call this equation 3. Now, since I have a and b here, okay, it is best for me to eliminate c in equation 2 and 3. So that I have this in terms of a and b, and then I solve it as simultaneous equation in two variables. So looking at this, for me to eliminate c, okay, I can choose to multiply the whole of equation 2 by 2. So I have 2c here, then I subtract to eliminate c. So we are going to multiply equation 2 by 2, okay? So 2 times 2 will give us 4a, plus 2 times 3 will give us 6b, plus 2c equals to what? 2. We call this equation 4. Then let's bring our equation 3 down, which is a plus 2b plus 2c equals to negative 1, equation 3. Now, if I want to eliminate C, this is positive 2C, this is positive 2C. So I can subtract equation 4 from equation 3. So equation 4 minus equation 3. This will give me 4A minus A, which will be 3A. And then 6B minus 2B, which will give me 4B. 2C minus 2C is 0. And then 2 minus minus 1 will give me 3. So I call this equation 5. Then I bring my equation 1 down, which is A plus B equals to 0. So let's solve for A and B. So this is equation 1. So for us to eliminate A or B, we can choose to multiply equation 1 by 3 or equation 1 by 4. So let's multiply equation 1 times 3. So equation 1 times 3 will give us 3A plus 3B equals to 0. So we call this equation 6. Let's bring our equation 5 down, which is 3A plus 4B equals to 3, equation 5. Now, if we want to eliminate A, this is 3A and 3A. So we are going to subtract equation 5 from equation 6, or equation 6 from equation 5. So equation 5 from equation 6, or equation 6 from equation 5. So we have equation 6 minus 5. 3A minus 3A is 0. 3B minus 4B is minus B, okay? And 0 minus 3 is minus 3. So our B is equal to 3. So if B is equal to 3, put B equals to 3 into equation 1. Put B equals to 3 into equation 1. So A plus 3 is equal to 0. A is equal to negative 3. So if we know A and B now, 
we can put it in equation 2 to get C. So put A equals to minus 3 and B equals to 3 into equation 2. So we shall have 2 times minus 3 plus 3 times B is what? 2 times A is minus 3 and then B is 3. So 3 times 3 plus C is equal to 1. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 3, 3 is 9 plus C is equal to 1. So C will be equal to 1 minus 9 plus 6. So our C will be equal to 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 minus 9 is minus 2. So therefore, A is equal to negative 3, B is equal to 3, and C equals to negative 2. So our partial fraction can be written as, we have A over X plus 2, so negative 3 over X plus 2, then plus our B. Our B is equal to what? 3. So 3 over X plus 1, and then our C is negative 2, then minus 2 over x plus 1 all squared. This is the partial fraction. Now let's solve a Rasi question. 5 minus 2x all over 1 minus x squared in partial fractions. So express express 5 minus 2x all over 1 minus x squared in partial fractions. So, you remember I spoke to you about having a quadratic expression and then a linear one. And I, and I told you if you have a quadratic expression, 3 over x squared plus 5. Okay? Okay, 3x plus 1 over x squared plus 5 and then x minus 1. You can express this as ax plus b for the quadratic, x squared plus 5, and then plus c over x minus 1 for the linear. Okay? Now, you see x squared plus 5, I can't do anything about it. I can't factorize it. I can't do anything. That's why it is a pure quadratic expression. Okay? Now, in the question given, we are asked to express this in partial fraction. Now, if I have 1 minus x squared, 1 minus x, so I have to be careful. Because if I have 3 over x squared minus 4, and I ask you to express this in partial fraction, you should know that this is difference of what? 2 squares. Okay, so I can write this as 3 over x minus 2, x plus 2. So I can later express this as a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 2. So you can see that this is difference of 2 squares. Now when you watch this one, this is also difference of 2 squares. So when you are asked to express this in partial fraction, this becomes 5 minus 2x over 1 minus x squared. This is equivalent to a over 1 minus x plus b over 1 plus x. Why? Because 1 minus x squared is the same as 1 squared minus x squared, which is the difference of two squares, which can be written as what? 1 minus x, 1 plus x. So I'm writing this in partial fraction as a over 1 minus x plus b over 1 plus x. So you see, I didn't use a x plus b over or a plus b x over 1 minus. No, I didn't use that because this is what? Difference of two squares. Now, let's go ahead and solve for the values of a and b. We shall have 5 minus 2x over 1 minus x squared. This is equivalent. We find the LCM 1 minus x. 1 plus x. So this will go into this two. We are left with a into 1 plus x. Then plus b into, this will go into this two. We are left with 1 minus x. So denominators are the same. So we shall have 5 minus 2x. To be equivalent, we have a into 1 plus x plus b into 1 minus x. So I think with this, we can use the second method we learned. Okay, there's no need for you to, you can choose to expand and then compare coefficients, solve them simultaneously, or we can get a value which will make this zero, okay? So if I have one plus x, what do I have to want to get zero? That will be negative one. So when x is equal to negative one, so I put it into this equation, we shall have five minus two times negative one equal to a into one plus minus one 
plus b into 1 minus, minus 1. So this is going to give me 5, ne 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. This becomes 5 plus 2, so which is 7. This is equal to, this will give me 0 plus, 0 times a, which is 0. And then 1 minus minus 1 is 1 plus 1, which is 2b. So we have our b to be equal to what? 7 over 2. So if b is equal to 7 over 2, what do I put here to also get 0? If 1 minus x, it means when x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, we shall have 5 minus 2 times 1 equal to a into 1 plus 1 plus b into 1 minus 1. So this will give me 5 minus 2, which is 3, is equal to 2a. Okay? So our a will be equal to what? Our a will be equal to 3 over 2. Okay? So expressing this in partial fraction, 5 minus 2x over 1 minus x squared now becomes our a is what? 3 over 2. So we have 3 over 2 divided by 1 minus x. Then plus our b is also what? 7 over 2 plus 7 over 2 divided by 1 plus x, which finally becomes 3 over 2 into 1 minus x, then plus 7 over 2 into 1 plus x. So this is our partial fraction. So with this, I will urge you and I will motivate you to go, for, go in for more examples, okay? I will urge you to go in for more examples, try and then solve it on your own, and then gain the confidence that you are doing mathematics, okay? Because the fear of mathematics is the beginning of wisdom. Thank you very much. Until next time I see you, bye.